Listen, there is, there is a reintroducing between us and the Holy Spirit that's taking place. We have known the goodness of the Father. We have been getting the revelation of the centrality of Jesus, what He has accomplished, what He has done. But my friends, I'm telling you, there is something happening with the Holy Spirit being reintroduced to the body of Christ. The Spirit of Jesus, the very person of the Holy Spirit that is the fullness of God inside of you. Join to your spirit. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit, Paul says, have been made one. Join together. And the Holy Spirit's been ministering to me all week over and over about this thing. And I want to I release this to you prophetically. And it has to do with a lot of what we've been sharing. And that is this word, disappointment. Disappointment is being broken off the body of Christ. Disappointment is being broken off the people of God. What? Listen, you might be 40, 50, 60, 70, and you're thinking, man, when I was 18, 19, 20, I, I wouldn't have thought this is where I'd be at this age. I wouldn't have thought this is what my life would have looked like the last 40 years. I wouldn't have thought my kids would have been this way, my finances this way, my job this way. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, disappointment is being broken off the body of Christ. Something is shifting. Something is shifting that, listen, things may not have worked out the way you thought, but my friend, you are like Joseph. It may not have, the journey may not have looked like what you thought it was going to look like, but you will be at the right hand of Pharaoh. You will be at the place God has called you to be. It may not look like what you thought it was going to look like. There may have been things you thought God was going to do and it didn't happen. It didn't work. It may not have been in the timing or the way, but I'm telling you, Holy Spirit wants to break off disappointment because disappointment will not allow you to receive the word of the Lord. When the prophetic word comes forth, uh, you know, I heard, I heard that 20 years ago. I was, yeah, I remember that from 1983. They gave me that word and they, well, here I am today. I guess, it, listen, disappointment will not allow you to receive the now word of God. There has to be a shift that takes place where we begin to say, you know what, Lord, I haven't seen it in 20 years, but I refuse to live in disappointment. I refuse to live in those lies. I receive, I just make a choice. I don't feel it, but I make a choice to receive the word of the Lord as truth. And I just say, Lord, let it be in my heart. Let it consume me. Let it be in my mind. Let it be in my soul, Lord. Consume me with truth that sets me free from that hopelessness, that despair, and that, dis that discouragement. I just declare to you, if you will make a choice that says, regardless of what I feel, regardless of what the journey's been like, Lord, I receive the word of the Lord. I receive what your purposes are. No matter what I've done, no matter what, what other people did, no matter what the church did to me. Listen, I'm telling you, if you've got church hurt, listen, join the crowd. It's, it's, <laughs> you've been rejected, you've been offended, you've been all these things. You've got to understand everything has been producing something in you that God can turn for good. Joseph could have been offended with his brothers. Do you know that when Joseph enters the place of being at the right hand of Pharaoh, which is where his dreams told him he was going to be 17 years, 17 years, he has this dream that he was above ever, you know, this, his father and his brothers and his mother, they were bowing to him, and all of a sudden he's in a pit. Total opposite. You extreme opposite. Have you ever experienced the opposite? <laughs> Come on. Listen, God's about to do something in your kid, and then you get a call from the sheriff's office. And you have a choice. You believe the word of the Lord? Or you believe this and you get into discouragement, hopelessness, despair, disappointment. So that the next time the, the Lord says, I'm about to do something. Yeah, right. I doubt it. And that's why you don't see it. That's why we don't see it. I'm telling you, something is shifting in our reception of truth because disappointment is being broken off. If Joseph would have stopped when he was in the pit, if Joseph would have stopped when he was lied about by, by Potiphar's wife, if Joseph would have stopped when he was forgotten about in the prison, he never would have stepped into the purpose of the dream came to pass completely different than what Joseph thought. 
Every time he hit the elevator to go up, it went down. <laughs> this thing is broken. <laughs> but here's what it says. I'll give you a verse on this. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. My goodness, the atmosphere is just ridiculous. Thank you, Jesus. Shaking. I'm going to find this. Psalm 105. Listen. Here's what happened. You and I would say, oh, Joseph's brothers betrayed him. Potiphar's wife lied about him. The, the butler and the baker, he interprets their dreams. They forgot about him. We would say he was betrayed. He was falsely accused. He was lied about. Here's what God says. Here's what Psalm 105, verse 17. He, God, sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord refined him. The word of the Lord refined him. It says until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord was actually working. When he was in the pit, the word of the Lord was working. When he was in, he was in prison, the word of the Lord was working. There was a refining taking place in Joseph's life so that when he did step into the place of destiny, he did not have a judgment against his brothers. He brought his brothers into the wealth that he had brought in. He brought his brothers into the place that he brought before. His favor with Pharaoh, he gave to his brothers. He didn't say, oh yeah, you, you scoundrels, you bunch of punks, I can't believe. Look what y'all did to me. Look at where I am now. Now y'all are going to be in jail. No. What does he do? The favor that he earned, he gives. This is the picture of Jesus, my friends. Jesus was Joseph, betrayed by his own, thrown into the pit by his own family, creation, lied about, falsely accused, thrown into the prison called death, Hades, and then ascends to the very right hand. God. Joseph was the right hand of Pharaoh. Second in command, right? Jesus ascends to the right hand of God. To do what? The very ones who betrayed him, he brings into his favor. He had every opportunity to be disappointed. He had every opportunity to be discouraged. He had every opportunity to say, you know what? That dream, a bunch of garbage. It'll never happen. Years. It says he stood before Pharaoh when he was 30 years old. Same time that Jesus stood at the Jordan. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to break off every lie of discouragement and disappointment. Every lie that has tried to define us and limit us from hearing, receiving, and believing the word of the Lord over our lives. I say that even though it has looked like opposition, Psalm 105, God has been sending you. God has been sending you. And that the things that look like, oh, it could never happen, I declare to you, God has a way that it, when it looks the most impossible to show up in the greatest way you could ever dream of. There are events in your life that are totally opposite, totally out from left field, like, oh my goodness, what? Your family, your life, your journey. I say to you that God is able to take everything that was meant for evil and turn it for good. Everything that was meant to destroy you and make it backfire on the enemy. I say that your family, that your finances, that your health, that your mind, that your clarity, that your strength is being renewed being restored, and that you will again believe in the word of the Lord. You will again believe in the purposes of God. And you might say, Ryan, but you don't understand. It was my fault. It doesn't matter. God never cursed Adam and Eve. He cursed the serpent. Because the liar is the one that put the lie they believed. God's not after you. He's after the lies that limited you, that deceived you. So, brethren, I just declare to you, even if it felt like the pit, even if it felt like the prison, I say to you, there is a day 
the prison door is open and you step into purpose. I declare you will believe that day and you will receive that day and you will experience that day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.